Good evening. We've all gathered here together with the same intention, with the same deep innermost wish that we want happiness, a happiness that is freed from all suffering and unwanted experiences. And of all the types of, suffer, of happiness that we long for, in particular it's a happiness that is lasting and stable, never punctuated by even a moment of displeasure. This is the happiness of liberation, where one is liberated from suffering and experiences no suffering of, of any magnitude at all, and, but abides in lasting, stable happiness. To achieve such a state, one needs to both eradicate the causes that would otherwise lead to suffering and avoid accumulating further uh, similar causes, as well as cultivating virtue, strengthening, uh, and, uh, strengthening our virtuous ways of thinking. So in order to eliminate suffering and cultivate virtue, we need to engage in meditation. Other than med meditating, there is no other way to transform our way of thinking into a completely virtuous mind, a completely happy mind, freed from all suffering. But in order to be able to skillfully meditate, we need to acquire fast uh, 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 knowledge, and this means we require a spiritual teacher, a lama, someone who can impart knowledge as well as the technique in how to integrate that through meditation. So therefore, our spiritual teacher, our spiritual mentor, is the very foundation upon which our spiritual development is, is um, developed. Hence, the teacher is seen as being so important, so precious. And therefore, we reflect on his good qualities relating to his body, speech and mind, as well as, well as his incomparable kindness. And we do so, so as to generate a transformative mind of, of trust, as well as respect. So this is where we are in the text and what we've been looking at in, in preceding weeks. And in this case, we have Tabata <laughs> 
tombagne de bêche à la congoule, et c'est bien, un douce de tombagne de terre, l'âme tablante, et de la madi, la méting ou la méting ou la la madi, la madi, la madi, la madi, la madi, la madi, la The technique of meditation based on knowledge is the unmistaken technique that brings about to an elimination, a complete eradication of suffering and me leads to the development of a mind that abides in lasting, stable happiness. So there are the, our mind we can divide into two divisions. One is, is on the side of um, unwholesome thoughts or non-virtue and the other is of the class of virtuous or wholesome ways of thinking. The unwholesome ways of thinking, these we need to eradicate so that they, at first, rise less frequently and have less strength and eventually never can arise at all. These unwholesome ways of thinking are afflictions such as anger, attachment, jealousy, pride and so forth. Then on the, the other side, the minds that we need to deepen our familiarity with, strengthen within us, so that they don't only rise more readily and last longer, but that they come to dominate, and eventually they all, all, um, the, all that remains are only mi uh, minds on the virtuous side. So these would be, for example, the wish to be of benefit, minds of, uh, or attitudes of loving kindness towards others, a mind of ethical restraint, where we committed not to bring harm to, to anyone, either, even mentally. Minds such as uh, joyous perseverance, where one takes delight in engaging in virtue. Minds of patience, which is a mind that stays undisturbed in the, in the face of adversity. So all of these ways of thinking, we develop in terms of, med or through meditation, based on knowledge. And the cultivation of the, the wholesome ways of thinking and the eradication of the unwholesome ways of thinking, this is, these together are called the path to liberation, where we cultivate virtuous paths and eradicate harmful ways of thinking. But to identify both the coarse and subtle unwholesome minds, as well as to learn what their antidotes are and how to skillfully apply the antidotes to eradicate them, we need a teacher. We need someone, a spiritual mentor, who lives as an example and skillfully guides us in this process. And so too on the wholesome side, to identify the wholesome ways of thinking, guide us in how to cultivate them and develop them ever stronger within us. And in terms, and, and moreover, we need our spiritual teacher to identify the root cause of all our suffering. Because for all of us it is the same. The ignorance, the consciousness that is an ignorance that misapprehends reality. From this, this ignorance of self-grasping, all our suffering comes. And our spiritual teacher not only will guide us in helping us identify that, but also teach us the, uh, the, the antidote to that, the wisdom realizing emptiness. And again, not just impart knowledge, but guide us in how we ourselves can cultivate these virtuous minds within us. So it's for these reasons that our, our Lama, our spiritual mentor, is of unparalleled importance. Chuk, 
Chinese The purpose or the need um, to, to see the qualities in our teacher, these must be understood. Because if one has, uh, has someone who, who is suitable to be one's spiritual guide, but one doesn't recognize his tremendous qualities, it's unlikely one will receive much benefit from him. Certainly, the full expanse of benefit that one can receive, one will not be able to. And this, this is because if one sees one's teacher as, as ordinary, perhaps as similar to oneself or not that much more developed, one's, one is first and foremost unlikely to even attend uh, teachings and is also during teachings, one's mind is likely to be much more critical, looking for faults. And this means one's mind is narrow and closed, as opposed to being open and receptive. And more, moreover, not only then, either not receiving teachings or not receiving much benefit from the teaching, through not acquiring knowledge, one has no basis to meditate on. And moreover, or, or rather, sorry, so therefore, it's imperative that one recognizes the qualities of our teacher, because on the other hand, if one does, recognize his qualities and his kindness, one will want to receive teachings, one will prioritize one's life to receive those teachings, and whilst doing so, one will be open and receptive, and those same words will penetrate deep inside. One will experience the teaching in a vastly different way from someone else whose mind is closed and narrow. And moreover, away from the teaching situation, one will want to apply those teachings to oneself. One will readily prioritize one's life, so there is time to re-listen to the teachings and, most importantly, reflect on them and keep them in mind, both in and out of meditation. So one will have a vastly different outcome from the same opportunity if one has come to recognize the great qualities of our teacher and his incomparable kindness. So for th this reason, it's imperative that one reflects using reasons on the qualities of one's teacher and his kindness. Now turning to our text near um, the bottom of page 8 is verse number 48. Even one of your hair poles is for us a field of merit more highly praised than all the conquerors of three times and ten directions. Compassionate refuge saver, I make requests to you. Mm. <laughs> And the order of the lines in the Tibetan and English are, is a little different. So in the English we're starting with the third line. Uh, then all the conquerors are three times in ten directions. 
So three, the, all the conquerors of three times in ten directions, this ref, refers to two different ways that one can think about all the Buddhas that abide throughout the vastness of time and space. Those that became Buddhas uh, since beginning of time, those that are, are becoming enlightened right now, and those yet to, to become enlightened, will be refers to the Buddhas of the three times. And the ten directions refers to the vastness of space. In every direction, there are, are Buddhas. So that's the, the meaning then of, of, of these first two terms, the three times and ten directions. Um, <laughs> Kumbu so let's then look at the first three lines together. Even one of your hair poles is for us, a field of merit more highly praised than all the conquerors of three times and ten directions. So comparing our spiritual mentor to all the Buddhas that uh, abide in the ten directions, or have uh, those beings, who, those conquerors, those Buddhas, who have become enlightened, are becoming enlightened, or will still become enlightened, compared to all of them, even this, uh, uh, the smallest um, uh, element or atom of our alama, uh, uh, such as a hair paw, our lama is even more precious than all of them. More precious in terms of both his kindness, as well as being as, as someone to whom we can accumulate vast stores of merit. So for this reason, uh, even, one, uh, even one of a single hair paw of our lama is for us a field of merit more highly praised. In other words, we can make even more merit through uh, the single, uh, uh, making offerings to the single poor of our lama than all the Buddhas. So here, and, 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 and also, that his kindness is greater than all the Buddhas. I don't know that you should do some new church, Yawa, Tam Jele, Rangelamade, Ranya, and the Sonam Sayagi, Sing Yashodis, or Yashodi, the Kabat Pavares. In, in brief, what this means is, compared to make, uh, uh, we can accum accumulate uh, far more merit in relation to our spiritual lama than all the Buddhas. So here, that's good to be clear that whilst the, this verse is, is, is clearly stating and the meaning is that in dependence on our Lama, we can accumulate far more merit than in, in dependence on any one or all of the other Buddhas, they, they, that is the meaning. It is possible there's a misunderstanding where one then would think that our Lama is better than all other Buddhas. In actuality, between all the Buddhas, there is no difference between them 
in terms of their qualities of attainment or of, of, of abandonment. There is no distinction that one can make that one Buddha has greater qualities than another or their um, abandonments or eliminations are greater than another. There is no way to differentiate between Buddhas in this way. Throughout this practice, we've been seeing our Lama as indivisible in essence from all the Buddhas. That, hence, when one is comparing our Lama to other Buddhas, one is comparing Buddhas to Buddhas. And one cannot differentiate between Buddhas in terms of their qualities of attainment or their qualities of abandonment or in terms of their power and potential. There is no uh, way to differentiate them in, in this way, saying that one is greater than the other. But where the differentiation can be made is from our side, in that for us, in dependence or in relation to our spiritual mental, as opposed to other Buddhas, we can accumulate far more, more merit. So the field of merit is even greater than or any or all other Buddhas. So in this way, we can say there's a difference, but that difference is in relation to ourselves, not differentiating between Lamas or Buddhas. ま、<音><音><音><音><音><音><音><音> Lamigi, <laughs> The reason why, for, for us, our Lama is an incomparable field of merit, greater than that of all the other conquerors of the um, three times and ten directions, as we've heard, is not because his qualities are greater than the others, but it is because that where we find ourselves now is that we are not able 
to directly meet Buddha Shakyamuni and receive teachings and guidance from him or from any other Buddha. And almost certainly, when Buddha Shakyamuni was abiding in this world, we did not have the merit at that time to receive teachings and guidance from him. And quite possibly, in that expanse of time between then and now, we may well not have uh, had the merit to receive guidance from other Buddhas. But where we find ourselves right now, at this point in this lifetime, is that we have met our spiritual teacher, and from him we have the opportunity to directly receive teachings and directly receive guidance on how to develop a spiritual path. So we do not have an opportunity to directly receive teachings from any of the great past Buddhas. We can read their texts and receive great benefit from them. But personal and direct teachings, as well as guidance in terms of how to develop a path and guiding us in that process of development, this we can only receive from our spiritual teacher. And moreover, we can only directly make offerings to our Buddha who is, to the Buddha who is our spiritual teacher. It's independent on our Lama that we have all the Dharma knowledge that we have. And it's independent on, on our Lama in this life that we have this foundation for spiritual transformation. It's independent on our Lama in this life that we are guided in how, in, in how to take this knowledge we have and integrate it within, deep within our very being. So it's for this reason that for ourselves, our Lama is supreme. so here we need to reflect that Buddha Shakyamuni, as well as so many other wheel-turning Buddhas, have appeared in this world and taught the Dharma. But we didn't meet them. And now we find ourselves in these times of great strife, these times of degeneration, yet we've somehow accumulated the causes to have met a Buddha, someone who illuminates the path for us, someone who is highly skilled in guiding us perfectly in how to accumulate virtue and purify uh, harmful ways of thinking and guide us thereby to attain a path ourselves, to generate a mental path ourselves. So who can be of greater benefit to us than this? What greater benefit can be received other than this? So this, is, this is a key point to reflect on. <coughs> Gugi <laughs> 
a sign of reflecting well on what is presented in this and, and the preceding verses is when we come to re recognize how truly fortunate we are that we have met our teacher and we have this opportunity to transform our, our minds and our not just this life but future lives too. When one just glances our, our teacher, sees just a part of his body, so perhaps a little more than a hair pull, but just seeing perhaps his shadow or seeing him from the side or hearing um, his voice or even just um, seeing his breath on a cold morning, great joy will arise within us because we'll recognize how truly fortunate we are, how incredibly fortunate we are. And <clears throat> ดนดาลาการสงฆ์เนี่ยถ้าไหนมีเสียงมุดอยู่เจ้ากี่ดีนะละมาเจ้ละมาตัวเนี่ยช่วยช่วยยามนั้นเจ้ากูหาเราเด
we transform our way of thinking. So changing our attitude, we make ourselves receptive to the teachings, open to them. They will enter into us and we will apply the required effort for them to abide within us at all times. Jin Again, the purpose of the section that we're at here is for, come, for us to truly recognize the great value of this opportunity that we have, to not take it for granted, not to think, oh, not today, but tomorrow, by recognizing that we did not have the merit to receive teachings directly from Buddha Shakyamuni. And all these great beings who were able to went on to become Arats and, and, um, and Buddhas themselves. And not just in those who were in his presence, but so many great beings have come um, uh, uh, in the expanse of time since then. We can think of the great lineage lamas from India, such as Nagarjuna and Chandakirti, to beings of great merit, who are surrounded by students of great merit, who achieved similar states in their own continuum as well. But we were not counted amongst them. And then, Great Lamas such as um, Shankara Chita and later Atisha, who took the Dharma to Tibet, and led to many great um, uh, uh, lineage Lamas arising in Tibet as well. Those who had accumulated vast merit and could receive teachings directly from those great, great Lamas and transform themselves and become great Lamas themselves. In this way, the lineage continued from Buddha Shakyamuni through India and into Tibet. We were encountered amongst them. But now, in these times of great degeneration, we have, though, somehow managed to accumulate the required merit to have met a Buddha, to have met our spiritual teacher, to have met a Buddha who appears to us in a form that we can relate to. Seeing, therefore, how rare this opportunity is and how it cannot be squandered because there's no certainty it will come again. We will value it. And valuing it, we will not let it go to waste. We will not take it for granted. We will see it as precious. We will see it as rare. And we will do so in a way that is not flippant, but transformative if we use reasoning and analysis. And the outcome will be, we will appreciate what we have and we will put it to best use. And we'll do so in a way that leads to our complete spiritual transformation. And in a 
这是大家说的东西,两个别人是的,大家说的东西,两个别人是的,这是大家说的东西,两个别人是的,这是大家说的东西,两个别人是的,这是大家说的东西,两个别人是的,这是大家说的东西,两个别人是的,这是大家说的
Ku sung tuk. Sanji yu ku, sanji yu sung, sanji yu tuk. Di ku sung kolo, di sum di seole. Di ku sum jenji kolo. Di jen ku sum che, jenji kolo si di ndigi yu yende, sam jimi kya ba di ye seole. Kolo si di. Ku sum jenji kolo si di ku sum ji ku yu. Sanji yu, sanji yu tamji yu ku. Ku da, nu sung da tuk che, ku sung che, ku sum che. Da, jenji kolo la di ku yu yende, sam jimi kya ba. Tugu yu yende, sam jimi kya ba. Sungu yu yende, sam jimi kya ba di. Jadi di cuma cuma aku kau ni sanji kau langsung macam tu, ngah langsung tu pasu jangan 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 sembah nampi yang kian tu kau marah sah aku tu marah je le. Okay, the first line adorned with the sugatas three bodies and ornamental wheels. Sugatas, of course, is another term for Buddhas. So here, and, and then three bodies, we should rather understand as the, um, the, 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 the qualities, or the three bodies, and refers to the, the, uh, the, the Buddha's, or a Buddha's, body, speech, and mind. So which is a little different from the usual meaning of three bodies. But it's referring to a lama, the, the Buddha's, uh, body, speech, and mind. And ornamental wheels refers to the incomparable qualities of the Buddha's body, speech, and mind. So that then is the, the meaning behind, behind the words here. So these qualities of a Buddha's body, speech and mind are only possessed by Buddhas and only known by Buddhas. Not even bodhisattvas know the qualities of a Buddha because they are so um, describable, uh, uh, so unimaginable. The, uh, the qualities of a Buddha are so beyond that of, of non-Buddhas that they are unimaginable. This is the Kusum Sede. Manzuk, Kusum, Tusum Sede, Kusum Sede, the election. The men be young and Kusum Sede, Chicken, the Moni Castle, Moni Longu, Longu, Trugu, and the Moni Gu Sede, or Dusine, Kusum. The Nigger Kusum Gu and the Sound Sammy Mu and then the other way that this uh, line can be thought about is, is closer to what we have in English, where th the three bodies refers to the three bodies of a Buddha, the um, Namanakaya, Sambhokakaya, and Dharmakaya, and, and the ornamental wheel still refers to the, the qualities of the Namanakaya, Sambhokakaya, and Dharmakaya. Jangan kusum sedu, sanji ji kusum sedu, kusum tu kusum ngoyer me, sangsum rojik ba sedu, ngoyer me cik ba ngoyer me di ku ku dang sung tu kusum ngoyer me baris. Jangan digi dah kusum tu ngoyer me la de, dah ngoyer me ku ku de kusum tu kusum sedu, dah ngaco ku dang sung dang tu kusya cik kusum tu kusum ngoyer me baris. Jadi dah ku longgu dah. And the ultimate qualities of the Buddha are, are indivisible in nature, in that the qualities of the, the three bodies, of the Namanakaya, Sambhokakaya, and Dharmakaya, these three are indivisible in nature. Nampak cukup 
Kuitenna the second line, you manifest from an alluring net of skillful means. So here, the, 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 the Buddhas have qualities of body, speech and mind that for non-Buddhas, are unimaginable, they're incomprehensible. And because of these qualities, they are able to act in ways that for us, is, you could say, is almost quite startling. And that's what is referred to in the second line, you manifest from an alluring net of skillful means. So the Buddhas, in order to benefit beings, will appear in a vast array of different ways. And they appear in a vast array of different ways because beings vary so in their, in their merit as well as in their uh, own unique karmic backgrounds and spiritual dispositions. And, the, and thirdly, because beings require a benefit in such a, a, an array of manners, the Buddhas appear in a wide variety of forms, an unimaginable variety of forms, always with the unmistaken uh, motivation and skillful means to benefit. And this then is, is the, the meaning of you man manifest from an alluring net of skillful means. And in this way, they can benefit beings of even the most limited capacity up to highly realized beings. So, <clears throat> Nigga, because of the incomparable qualities of a Buddha, they can skillfully appear and interact with beings in the perfect form and manner. So for those who require an ordinary human being to uh, uh, the, the Buddha will appear as an ordinary human being. Those who be benefited best by someone appearing manifestly, obviously, as a bodhisattva will do so. Others who require the uh, uh, will be most benefited by the the Buddhas appearing as a god or deity will do so. And this and the, the Buddhas are able to to uh, uh, manifest in such a wide variety of ways because of their incomparable qualities and their need to because of the wide array of, 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 of beings who differ so in their dispositions and inclinations. But despite this wide variety amongst beings, a Buddha will always benefit, will always manifest in the way that is of greatest benefit. Mm. Then 
ก็มีญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญาติญา
the, this word unimaginable, incomprehen incomprehensible, is lit literally beyond thought. And that is how the qualities of a Buddha, uh, uh, the qualities of a Buddha's uh, body, speech, and mind are. We can't comprehend them. Nevertheless, or, or rather, due to having those qualities, they have incomprehensible incom power and love and compassion. And due to this, they always and continuously appear before beings in the aspect or in the form that is of most benefit to that being at that time. If, for us, a wheel turning Buddha was most required, or not most required, we had the merit to um, in, 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 enact with a wheel turning Buddha, one would appear. So the Buddhas appear due to their power and love and compassion, precisely in accordance with the needs and capacity of the being of beings. So for us, through reflecting on that, we should gain clarity that our, our Lama, he is an emanation of a Buddha, which means in reality, he is a Buddha. But the aspect that he shows is an aspect that beings of our capacity can relate to. Hence, he appears in this ordinary, in this common aspect. And the verse ends with the same line as above. Compassionate refuge savior make requests to you. The, the, the meaning is, is the same as before. So with all of these verses, we're requesting uh, blessings, or, or maybe better translated as inspiration from our Lama. We've opened our heart uh, to him through having re re reflected on his great qualities and kindness. We are now open and receptive, and we're requesting his continued care and guidance and skillful guidance so that we can be inspired to strive to transform ourselves and thereby give rise to the self-same qualities he has, his qualities of, of body, speech and mind, striving, bless us to, to strive to generate those same qualities, attain those same qualities ourselves. And that Nishi
So now I'll summarize what you've looked at this evening. Looking at the first verse, even one of your hair paws is for us, a field of merits more highly praised than all the conquerors of the three times and ten directions. Compassionate refuge, Savior, I make requests to you. Here we reflect that all the Buddhas who all those great beings who have attained enlightenment, those who are attaining enlightenment now, or those who are far advanced and are, are yet to still become Buddhas, that none of them are able to benefit us right now like our Lama can. Because it is only from our, our Lama in whose presence we can sit and directly receive teachings and guidance. So therefore, our opportunity with this Lama is unique. So the key point here was that there is no difference between our, our, our Lama, our Lama the Buddha, and all other Lamas or Buddhas. The difference uh, uh, resides, so there's no difference between them in terms of their qualities or their power and, and potential and ability. The difference comes from our side, in that we have a connection with, with this uh, Lama Buddha, and therefore we have this incomparable opportunity. And we will, in this opportunity to receive teachings and guidance that is no different from what Buddha Shakyamuni or any of the other Buddhas have or could possibly give. So reflecting on this point is of great importance because it leads to a generation of, of, of trust and, uh, in, in our teacher and in particular, an appreciation for this opportunity. And that mind, seeing how valuable this opportunity is, will lead to us not taking it for granted. Seeing how an opportunity such as this, we haven't had before. They come along, or the causes are created with great difficulty, and therefore, such opportunities are rare. And I must not let it go to waste. On that Tigjeni Vadi, did it, the Shekuju, Kunjen Yukolo, and the Tegu Jujuja Chevel, Tamasu Yuju Artisivet, and one tradition or so at the city, that the Nanyu body, Tishin Shaba San Yiki, Kuyu, and the Sungu, and the Tuyu, and the Sum Delia, and the Sanga Sami Miki, and the Chicken Yukolo di, Nanzuki, Chicka Hako to your daughter, to your Kayama, your mother, the Ben Bazaki, and the Bottom of a serial dress. She's not the names, and that's San Yigilla, the Nigu, and the Yore, she's not that. Tamabetu, Lamati, Nansule, Chikchushukor The second verse we looked at, adorned with the Sagata's three bodies and ornamental wheels, you manifest from an alluring net of skillful means in ordinary form to lead all beings. Compassionate refuge saver, I make request to you. So here we um, recall to mind either the qualities of the Buddha's body, speech and mind, or the qualities of the, the three different bodies, the uh, Namanakaya, Sambhokakaya and Dhammakaya. 
reminding ourselves that these are limitless and for us unimaginable. But due to these qualities, which we would experience expressed as loving kindness and wisdom and great power, the Buddha is able to skillfully appear in the most suitable aspect for each being at varying times. And the most important and beneficial of all aspects is the one that teaches directly, explicitly, the complete and unmistaken path to enlightenment. And, and our, our Buddha, our Lama, is illuminating that very path to enlightenment, teaching us in a complete and unmistaken manner what we need to cultivate and how to do so, what we need to abandon and eradicate and how to do so, in order to generate the path within our own continuum, and gain a state freed of suffering. And because of who we are and the merits that we, that we have, our teacher appears in the aspect that is most suitable, which is in, as in a common, ordinary aspect that we can relate to. But despite this outer appearance, his essence is that of a Buddha. So these reasons that have been presented in these two and the preceding verses need to be reflected on again and again, generating certainty in his qualities and his kindness. Because that then makes us open and receptive for transformation. And this is imperative because it is in dependence on being receptive to his teachings. And we will gain some experience of them. And in this, this loop of receiving teachings and reflecting in the way that we guided, we'll experience some transformation. And that itself adds strength to our mind, a commitment to strive and to use this opportunity well as we see that transformation is really attainable for all of us. So therefore these verses are really of great importance. <coughs> ดิเซนเนี่ยหยามเล่นเจียกอกอบชุยะรากยอมารวะดายอมารวะเป็นเนี่ยหยาโรดาดุนโรดาซิซึมเจกะเนชินาจิดิเซนเนี่ยนับบ
Because other than uh, uh, manifesting next to an animal and perhaps guiding it through some danger, the, uh, the Buddha cannot help them in anything much more meaningful than that. For example, not even a Buddha can teach the Dharma to a fish in a way that a fish could understand. Because a fish in that life form lacks the mental capacity to understand what should be adopted, what wholesome minds should be adopted, and what unwholesome minds need to be abandoned. So because of the limitations on the side of the being of that fish, a Buddha cannot guide them in this way. We, on the other hand, all of us, we have this remarkable human intelligence, and therefore we have this most precious of rebirths, and we have this incomparable opportunity to transform ourselves. This meditation is of great importance, recognizing this incomparable jewel that we have in our hands. And it's up to us whether we open our hands and make the most of this opportunity. When we reflect well on this, delight will arise for us, and a strength of mind, a courageous mind, knowing that what we can achieve, and as this arises within us, we will strive willingly, wholeheartedly to transform ourselves, to make the most of what remains of this opportunity. And in this way, with ease, we persevere and with joy, we engage in the Dharma, reprioritize our life and live a life of incomparable meaning. So thank you so much. And we'll finish here tonight. Thank you.